water is going to be scarcer than oil in 2030, and demand is going to exceed supply by 40%. Now, if you look at water as a system, right, there are many, many moving parts that in play here. Right? You need to acquire water. You need to uh, treat it, store it, uh, transport it, uh, distribute it, and then consumers look like us will end up using it. Now, this, this whole system is riddled with inefficiencies. Right? It's, uh, and, and as the demand for water increases, uh, we tend to put more stress on each of these individual blocks. Now, let's dig a little deeper, shall we? Um, <clears throat> around 71% of Earth is, is water. Right? That's a lot of water. But, but around 96.5% of that is, is oceans. So that's not usable. That's not for human use. So out of the remaining 3.5%, uh, 70% is glaciers and ice. So if you, if you keep going down this funnel, right, you'll realize that only less than 1% is available for human use. And even within that, 70% is for agriculture, 22% is used by industrial supply systems. So in the end, a teeny tiny 0.08% of all available water is for us, like consumers like you and I can, can consume. Right? That's a very tiny fraction. And, and that's why uh, the cost of water is rapidly increasing. Now, if you look at, if you look at a report published, uh, over the last three decades, if you look at the consumer price trends, right, how, how the, the costs have varied for like water, natural gas, electricity, you'll see that the cost of water has risen by 400%. Right? Now that's, that's more than electricity and natural gas combined. And that's a lot. And it's, it'll continue to get worse. Right? And so uh, the scarcity factor is going to just continue to get worse year over year. Now let's see, like, how did we get here? Right? It's, uh, one of the main reasons is that our system is filled with inefficiencies like leakage and we have wastewater and the pipes, that are aging pipes, and there are many more reasons. Right? All of these things have contributed and now we are in this situation where the cost of water is rapidly increasing and there's no drinking water available for everyone on Earth. And if you talk about leakage, around 2.1 trillion gallons of clean, treated water is just lost every year in the US, right? It's due to leaks, faulty meters, broken water mains. And this can actually feed tens of millions of people for an entire year, right? That's, that's a lot of water to waste. And this fact is, is aggravated by the fact that uh, the average age of pipes in the US, in the US and Canada is around 47 years, right? which means there are some pipes that are like 100 years old. And just a couple of weeks ago up in Berkeley, there was a, there was a broken water main, like just thousands of gallons just wasted. And um, water supply was shut off for, for many people. And the reason this happened was there was a gushing leak in a cast iron pipe that was installed in 1933. <laughs> that's, that's 83 years old. It's, it's crazy. And the problem is, this is pervasive across the world. It's, it's not an easy thing to fix because it's extremely expensive. Right? Just to fix the aging pipes in the US alone, it takes $335 billion. Now, this is one of the most developed countries in the world. Imagine what's happening in some of the less developed countries. It's, it's enormous. It's, the problem is, is huge. And so, one of, the ways, one of the ways to solve this problem is we can do smart things with data, right? If you cannot replace all the hardware, if you cannot replace all the pipes, why don't we monitor it and be smart about it? Right? And that's where, that's where data comes into picture. We currently live in a data-driven economy where huge industries are completely changing the ways they work uh, using data, right? For example, uh, let's take manufacturing. Uh, just a few decades ago, people like humans used to stand in assembly lines and, and do their jobs. And now it's completely like robots and automation has completely taken over this industry. Um, same thing is true with uh, supply chain, for example. Right? Uh, instead of humans trying to figure out with their spreadsheets how to you know, route and plan this whole uh, thing, they're using data analytics to, to optimally route and schedule everything so that they're way more efficient, it's much faster, and they're just way more profitable as well. Right? And so water, water is, a one, is one such industry. Right? If you look at the trend, right, how, 
how tech evolves over time. Right? Back in the 80s, people were using spreadsheets and manual tools, right? and then people moved to on-prem software. Software is basically something that's installed on your computer. There's no cloud. Right? And then people moved to cloud-based solutions so that people, any, people anywhere can access the same solution from, from multiple geographical locations. And then we are now living in an AI-driven world where everything is powered by data and artificial intelligence. Right? So the entities that refuse to adapt are just going to perish because the world now is a lot less tolerant to incompetence right, than it was, say, in 1950. So <clears throat> data is the answer. Right? So how do, we, how do we use data? What is data, anyway? Right? Number one is we just need to do like, two things efficiently, like collect data efficiently and do smart things with it. Right? It looks pretty straightforward. Um, what's the big problem here? Well, let's see. Right? Let's, say, let's say there's a pipe that's installed, like, like, that's like 100 miles away from where you live. Right? And you want to measure how much water is flowing through it. And so what you do is you install a nice meter, and then it, it's going to measure the water. Now, the problem is, for you to know what's happening in that pipe, you need to send a guy who will go there and look at the readings. Right? Now, imagine that like, Every guy is responsible for like hundreds and hundreds of these, like thousands of these meters, right? So obviously you cannot hope to send a guy every single hour. It's just not going to happen. So and that's why they take these readings once every two months, right? So what's going to happen between the two successive readings, right? Anything, all the data is just being lost because it's just not looking at it, right? And that's where the efficiency part comes into picture. How can we continuously monitor water everywhere without kind of uh, without uh, allocating a lot of manpower to it. And number two is, how do we do smart things with it? Which means, if you collect all the data, what's the point of doing it if, if you're not extracting meaningful insights and altering your behavior? So that's, that's where the smartness thing comes, comes into picture. So let's talk a little bit about data collection. Uh, now, to collect data efficiently, we do, to avoid sending like a, like a human every time to get those readings, we can use internet-connected wireless sensors. So what these sensors can do many things like uh, measure temperature, pressure, vibration, water flow, uh, soil moisture. You can you, you name it, and these sensors can do it. And these sensors are wirelessly connected to the internet, so they can just stream data to the cloud, and you can just access it without sending a human. Right? And this. This ecosystem of internet-connected sensors is called Internet of Things. I don't know if you've heard of Buzz. I'm sure you've heard of it. Like, thing is, is a sensor. So basically, an ecosystem of sensors that can measure these vital things, uh, that is the ecosystem we're heading towards. And that's how you collect data very efficiently. And number two is, is basically a lot of water data is already available. There are billions of sensors, billions of sensors and meters that are already collecting data. Right? So all we need to do, some of them are connected to the internet, most of them are not. And that's, where, that's why we've got to figure out how can we get that data so that we can, we can do something with it. And, <clears throat> and the thing is, we, we need that data because we should aspire to live in a world where decisions are driven by data. Right? Human intuition is, uh, is grossly insufficient when it comes to decision making. Right? Because we are dealing with like exabytes of data over here, which means uh, you, humans cannot just use this guesswork to, um, to solve the problems. Right? And, and that's where uh, efficiently understanding data becomes very, very handy. And managing water effectively has a lot of benefits. Number one, you can cut the usage. Right? Number two, you can reduce the risk of shortage. You can reduce, uh, avoid expensive operations and maintenance. So basically, being smart with data has a lot of benefits, especially to water. Right? And we need to aspire to live in this world driven by data, because without data, you're just another person with an opinion. Right? And that's been happening a lot. Right? And that's why we need to move away from it. In the past, people used to use their experience or, or guesswork to say that, hey, you know, I, I've seen this. It might look familiar. Let me let me use my intuition to do something with it. That's that's usually very very suboptimal. Now, <clears throat> how does it work in practice? Now, <clears throat> number one is we just we need to collect data continuously, right? We need to collect continuously. We need to analyze the data with algorithms, and then we need to take real time decisions. Now. <clears throat> Collecting data continuously, right? That's, is, that's being done using Internet of Things, uh, which means that all these sensors that are installed, uh, they are 
uh, they are gathering data continuously and streaming to the cloud. Right? And let's talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the field of study uh, that deals with creating machines that can, that can function like humans, right? that can perform tasks that require human intelligence. Right? And a lot of the research in this field is, is based on emulating the learning process of the human brain. Human brain is amazing. It's like the best form of AI, artificial intelligence, because it can, it can learn with effortless ease, and it, it almost happens subconsciously. You don't even need to try, and you'll know a chair is a chair, right? Uh, it's not so easy for machines to do it, because machines just need a lot of data to understand even the simplest things. And so, <clears throat> Artificial intelligence, and there's a paradigm within artificial intelligence called deep learning that especially focuses on, on this, where they create models based on the human brain so that uh, we can emulate the learning process and be really efficient with it. Right? And so basically, you measure, learn, and you infer. Right? That's if you keep this loop in any system, you can be very, very efficient. Right? Let's take an example. Now, let's say you want to monitor water usage by utilizing flow, flow sensors in residential buildings. Now, these flow sensors are, are retrofit, which means that you can, just, um, you can just put it on top of a pipe, and it'll start measuring the water flow, and it'll start streaming the data to the cloud. <clears throat> now, in this case, by, by efficiently measuring the flow of water, right, you can, be, you can do uh, you can be way more efficient with it. Just the act of measuring it and looking at it will alter your behavior. Because, uh, because if you don't know how water is being wasted, you won't do anything about it. But, but if you know, hey, maybe I'm you know, using way more water for my lawn, or, or just there's a lot of leaks in, in, in the building, I need to do something about it. Just by looking at the data will alter your behavior. And that's why we need to monitor water usage and then, then understand how can we can be more efficient with it. Right? And so, there are many, many other problems you can solve as well, right? You can detect leakage, you can track trends, you can identify anomalies, you can forecast demand, you can predict events, and you can, be, you can do a lot more things, right? Depending on where you are. If you are dealing, dealing with buildings, you can do these things. You can do the same for irrigation systems, for utilities, industrial supply systems. And so just the act of... Uh, Measuring it will, will make you improve it. There's a very famous saying by Peter Drucker that goes like, "If you cannot, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it." Right? So, measure measuring is an important part. Measuring efficiently is even more important, and then doing smart things with it is is how you make it more efficient. Now, <clears throat> how can we, right? How can we contribute? What can we do, right? Here and and uh, when. Water is not a new problem, right? Water, it's been around for a while. I mean, when, when you, you, you hear people talk about, hey, water is leaking, water is getting wasted, people don't have access to clean drinking water. Uh, if you look around the world, like 783 million people don't have access to clean drinking water. That's a lot of people, right? It's, and so what's, uh, what's, what's changed now, right? It's been around for a while, why now? The problem is, or, or the solution is, now we now have the tools to solve the problem. Like 25 years ago, you, you, you were not in a position to kind of install these high-end sensors at low cost because the cost was very expensive. You didn't even know how to install the sensors. Even if you wanted to, you don't have the money. But now, because of advances in technology, we can deploy low-cost sensors everywhere to measure everything. Right? And so now, it's, so this, you know, we are now in a position to kind of address this issue that's been around for a while. So uh, whenever, we, right, whenever we hear people talk about Water, right? We we listen and maybe maybe we'll feel sorry for a minute and then we'll continue, you know, doing exactly what we've we've been doing for years. Right? People in, in developing regions they are they are fighting for this basic necessity every single day. Right? It's it's they they cannot we cannot expect them to build like sophisticated artificial intelligence algorithms or maybe set up Internet of Things infrastructure to solve their own problem because well, they're fighting for water every day. So the responsibility is on us, and even more so because we are privileged enough to understand the nature and scale of this problem. Right? So we, uh, we, should, we should aspire to build these intelligent machines that can solve this problem. Right? These artificial intelligence has, has all the answers, so we just need to use it in the right way to solve this water crisis. Thank you. <laughs>